Hey, I'm Ken Urban. Uh, I grew up in Rapid City, South Dakota, born in the Depression. And, uh, my dad uh, had to quit college and he was running a typewriter shop. And when, they, when I was born, they brought me home to the back room of the typewriter shop. And that was home for a while until we built a concrete house out in the country with a tar paper shack, tar paper roof on it. And I remember waking up as a little boy and looking down and seeing my slipper flo floating by in three inches of water. <laughs> Uh, but it was a fun place to be a kid. Dad had a uh, business partner after the typewriter shop they got into uh, uh, construction and he learned to fly there in Rapid and uh, the war came along and he wanted to be a, in the Air Force but he, he, he had a eye problem so they wouldn't accept him so he got into the Civil Air Patrol. <laughs> And the Civil Air Patrol just did courier service from Rapid City to Ainsworth, Nebraska, to, to different for Pure, and, and uh, so he had his own airplane. He had an old Luscombe, and uh, he he flew that, and he you know he crashed five airplanes in the process of his of his career, but he he never uh, you know never had any serious injuries. But that's how he got he got going, and then he when he uh, got into the housing business and making good money, he bought a Bonanza, and uh, which is a upscale uh, single engine plane, and and uh, we used to take that over to pheasant hunting uh, in eastern South Dakota when it was hunting season. So that was fun. I remember enjoying riding in that Bonanza. Later on, I flew one. But I didn't want to become a pilot. <clears throat> I just, uh, I was just working for Trust Choice Corporation and uh, uh, I was wanting to be a successful salesman. <clears throat> and uh, they, uh, when I signed up with them, they asked me to go to Dubuque, Iowa and, and set up a, and operate a, manu a manufacturing plant there. And, and I was happy to do that because, uh, so I set up the equipment and uh, trained the employees and. And, uh, but we weren't selling anything. And the boss was a pilot back in Idaho. He was a bush pilot. Uh, and he said, Ken, go take some flying lessons and get out and set up some distributors. So uh, I went and took the flying lessons and just flying old flying club equipment. But by golly, we got going. And uh, I discovered that there was uh, a lot of apartments being built, the kind of, kind of stuff that they were building back in and uh, Boise, we couldn't we couldn't do in the Chicago vicinity because the, the fire codes are altogether different. So I looked at apartments, and Harold says, "Ken, don't mess with apartments. Uh, we tried it out here, and it didn't work. But the, the dynamics were just different. And I found a, an apartment builder who would uh, could save a bunch of money by using our product, and so it took off just like a." <laughs> skyrocket and pretty soon we were selling apartments like mad and and Harold said well now I want you to <coughs> uh, do a, an apartment seminar and so I did one in Peoria but, but by this time uh, I was through flying uh, flying club equipment they'd got me a nice Comanche uh, which is a retractable gear nice air, little airplane uh, so I was flying around the country and it was so helpful, that, that, that small aircraft was a key to just so much sales because, uh, you're, you know, you've got a distributor 600 miles away, what do you, to, to, to commercially to get to him is a pain in the neck, but if you jump in the airplane, you can be over there in a couple hours. <clears throat> and uh, so the, the, the light aircraft was a key to our growth and, and uh, uh, guy'd call up from Indianapolis, Indianapolis, and say, "Hey, I got this big apartment project. Can I come over? Can you come over and help me?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, I'll be over there 10 o'clock in the morning." Well, if it was commercial, I'd have to get Ozark Airlines <laughs> out of Dubuque and fly to Chicago, and then take another flight over there. And, and I, this way, I could just go jump in the Comanche and be over there and, and be ready for it. So it was uh, it was a key to things working 
uh, for us in, in, in uh, that sales manager's role. You know, I just I don't remember much about the lessons. I just went out to the airport and, and uh, I don't remember my instructor's name, but we just, uh, uh, you, you had to do a bunch of paperwork uh, to, to get your written uh, ticket to be a private uh, pilot and and then do a flight test. And okay, well that I uh, and the the flight test for for visual they call it VFR, uh, where you're just you're not instrument rated. You're just flying by what you can see. Uh, was pretty easy, so I got that and just took off flying the flying club equipment. And then later on, I tried to get my instrument and I passed the passed the uh, the written, but I flunked the, the uh, flight test a couple of times and, and just said, oh, heck with it, <laughs> let's just go. So uh, uh, that's what I did. And the, uh, yeah, the learning the process of uh, how to communicate with the towers and how you're, you know, you, when you're taking off, you're, you're under ground control and then, and then you're under, under the, the, the local district controller and then you get into when you start coming in then you then you're on a, another controller that that brings you into land at the field so it was a, it was a kind of interesting to to learn how to do it and you, of course you learn by goofing it up but I didn't I didn't you know, I didn't have any major problems that way but it was interesting for a little guy to fly into a big airport in Chicago. That was that was a <laughs> when, when you got that thing tied down. But the, the 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 challenges were some of the weather situations. Uh, I remember when I had a flying an old 175 uh, high wing uh, flying club piece of equipment going up to Milwaukee, and there was a little private airport called the, the Timmerman Field. And it was in in uh, winter, <clears throat> and the the wind was blowing across this field, and there were there were little berms of, of snow snow drifts coming across there, and the wind sideways. So I, I came into that thing and you know cross set up for a crosswind landing, hit the snow, and it was like this, and like <laughs> I was very glad to get that airplane tied down. <laughs> uh, Lots of other adventures. We uh, had a big national meeting at Boise uh, one time, and uh, Jim Lyons, the, the national sales manager, was back in, in Dubuque with a uh, company, Bonanza, which is a V tailed, uh, nice uh, Beechcraft air cam. And, uh, I was working on my instrument, so I, I, I was in the pilot seat and we, we uh, were flying along and everything was going good. And we get to Shadron, Shadron, Nebraska, which is where, where Doris was born. And uh, here's this wall of weather. And uh, he was busy flying, uh, filing an a, a instrument flight plan with Denver Center. And uh, I said, do you want me to do a 360 out here while we wait to get the, the plan? And, he said, no, he said, I about got to go on in. Well, the minute we're in there, it's just violent up and down. And, and Doris is in the back seat with an actual production manager, and she's grabbing a hold of his thumb and just there <laughs> praying like mad. And it was, it was really bad. I, I just made my peace with God. I said, Lord, if this is it, if this is it, at least, the, you know, the kids are with Dorothy. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and, and I asked Jim, I said, should I t turn left and get out of this? He said, no. He said, w they tell you when you fly into a cell, if you just stay with it for six minutes, you'll normally be out the other side. Well, about 15 minutes later, we were still doing this stuff. And he said, well, we must have flown into a uh, string of cells. He said, well, why don't you ease off to the left? So I did, landed in Casper and kissed the ground. <laughs> I was so glad to be, uh, be on the solid ground. My first solo flight was in uh, Dubuque and I was flying a, 
a flying club tri-pacer and uh, just uh, didn't seem to have any trouble. Just went around the airport and made my, did a couple of touch and goes and, and uh, uh, landed without any incident. So, but that same tri-pacer, <laughs> we had a, we were flying, a tri-pacer is a little podunk uh, uh, Piper outfit that uh, was fabric, you know, and uh, in aluminum. But anyway, Doris and I and the kids were flying back through Rapid City for some event. And, and we're going along and Doris is, looks down and said, you know, the cars are going faster than we are. And sure enough, we were in about <laughs> 50 mile an hour headwind. And, <laughs> and so here were the cars. <laughs> we, uh, we wound up landing in, in, in pier and, and spending the night and then going on the next day. But uh, the uh, other flying club equipment, they had an old Cessna 175 uh, that was uh, a high wing airplane and that's the one where I had the problem landing in Milwaukee. One of the big benefits of having access to that airplane was being able to to meet with our, our buddy Whitey Sorensen up in International Falls, take the kids along and uh, go walleye fishing. And we, we'd meet him in International Falls and then get in the boat and go for um, 50 miles <laughs> to, to the to Chet's border camp. But I've got a, a picture of Barb when she was, you know, just a, a second grader or something with a little $6 Zebco outfit and a, a two pound walleye. <laughs> so we, we had a lot of fun uh, just uh, doing stuff like that. One incident, we, we uh, it was before the Comanche, I had, it was one of the flying club airplanes, but we, uh, were involved in a in a little Bible camp in in uh, uh, west of us in, in Iowa, and they had a a grass strip over there. So I uh, took us over there, and we landed in the grass strip, no problem. But uh, when it got to take off, the uh, it, it wasn't a real powerful airplane, and I can remember looking at this barbed wire fence out my window. <laughs> <laughs> just barely, barely cleared it at the end of the runway, so that would have been interesting. The, uh, when I crashed the Comanche was another unforgettable uh, event. I, I got up early, I had some architect in, in Tulsa that had asked me to come down and look at a big uh, apartment project that he was putting together, so uh, I, got up early and, and the, the people that were selling the gas there at the fixed base thing in, in Dubuque weren't up yet. So I thought, well, I got enough gas to get to Des Moines. Well, I almost did. <laughs> so, so I'm up here flying along and, and uh, uh, one tank goes dry. So I switched to the other tank and the other tank goes dry. And normally, you, just, you know, in, in farm country, you just pick out a a farm road and, and that's where you land. Well, the 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 place that I was going into uh, was a kind of a swale and it was a little full of fog and I thought, man, I don't want to meet a carload of kids, school kids at, down there. So at the last minute I put it over in the cornfield. Well, a cornfield landing is usually one of these. It just, you just flip right over because you're, especially with the gear down, your gear catch and it just, but fortunately the the uh, cornfield was uh, a little bit of a slope, so uh, uh, my right wing caught first and I just kind of swung around and, and wound up landing facing back where I came from. And it was like landing on a seven foot mattress. I mean, it was so, I couldn't, I looked around, there was no broken glass, I wasn't bleeding. Uh, I, I couldn't believe that I could crash that airplane and, and walk away from it <laughs> unscathed. Last time I flew would have been in the mid mid 60s, so it's a long time ago, <clears throat> and I <laughs> I wouldn't uh, have any uh, opportunity to, to successfully fly a pl plane at this point. I don't think I logged 700 hours in 
uh, single engine, <clears throat> and uh, uh, but then when, after that I got you know when I got w w in into world missions, uh, I started flying around the world for them, and I have been literally and effectively around the world 24 times. So uh, Kazakhstan is halfway around the world. I took 22 trips over there and a, a trip to M Mongolia and a trip to Africa and other stuff commercially. So uh, I spent a lot of time in airplanes. When uh, we went to work for, for Trust Joist, they're based in, in uh, Boise, Idaho. And uh, so we had occasion to, to go there quite often. And Tom and I had uh, uh, opportunity to, to fly into to the, the uh, private fly-in ranch that Harold had uh, up on the, on the Salmon River. And uh, it was called the Allison Ranch. And it had been a working ranch, I guess, at one time. <clears throat> they had... Uh, but that was that was more fun. It, it was a one-way landing, and you, you you didn't you didn't have there was no missed approach. You, you're flying up the, this uh, river, and 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 here's a here's a gap in the trees, and you fly in the gap, and and there's a runway, and you, you land. There's no options, <laughs> so you fly by it first to be sure that there's no animals out in the field and then you just come around and land but we had we had a lot of fun at Allison Ranch it's just a, a uh, we did some carpenter work and but it just a lot of us caught some fish and uh, it was some good good memories and then the other the other interesting uh, airline situation I was I flew into Kansas City Kansas to work with a distributor and, and just uh, later hopped over to Kansas City, Missouri, which has a bigger air, air, airfield. And uh, uh, I was, had landed and the, the general aviation thing was over here and I was over here and, and I turned to come across and I thought I heard the aircraft controller said four seven pop clear clear across and so I, I started and he, and and then he just screamed four seven pop hold short <laughs> and here was this four engine prop in the airliner just just coming across if I had another just a split second <laughs> we'd have been tangled up and uh, so that was uh, one another interesting item yeah, my last uh, uh, memory of being in a small aircraft uh, uh, our granddaughter married a pilot and they came here and and they were they just thought we ought to go for a ride so he rented a, a single engine outfit here and we flew around the denver area and it was really fun to just be up there i didn't have a particular desire to be flying again for, at, at, at the controls but i i love a little airplane there's just Something special about flying in, in a light aircraft. It's uh, very personal and more of an adventure than getting in a 737. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video called Legacy. I want to take a second to thank my grandfather for taking his time to sit down with us and share one part of his legacy in aviation. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about what Aeronautica is and what we are doing for a business. I want to answer that question by telling you why we exist. We want to enhance the lives of anybody who is in the aviation community, from pilots to flight attendants to this kid that I was listening to his podcast who lives in Australia and dedicates his life to covering aviation news stories. We want to have an effect on the aviation community with products and services, even if it's something as simple as a hat or a t-shirt. We want to thank you again for checking out this video. Please like and share below, and if you'd like to check out our products and services, the website is flyaeronautica.com.